Welcome to the Arclight Battery, your power source for all things Warcraft, Arclight, Rumble related. And in today's video, I'll be talking about every single leader in the game and what builds I would use if I were starting today. But just full disclosure, this is my opinion, um, so take them with a grain of salt. Uh, and as always, you can find all of these builds on ArclightBase.com. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Our first character is my Shadow Song. We've talked about all of these leaders before in different family overviews, so we're just going to breeze through some of these and talk about why I would play them the way they are. So, first off, we've got Defias Bandits. I really like this unit. Pick lock is two extra gold when opening chests. Pretty solid to have a little bit of gold advantage. Uh, obviously, Maev is unbound. Her cost is reduced by playing unbound units, so we're going to be playing a lot of them in this build. The first one is our safe pilot. We're playing the Gnomish Cloaking Device uh, just because it gives her stealth and ambush when she lands. It helps her get an auto attack off because a lot of the times if you just play her in the middle of a bunch of stuff, uh, she'll die before she actually gets to hit anything. And she hits relatively hard with ambush coming out of stealth, so that's good. Quillbore, you all know it's my favorite unit. Uh, he will feature in every single build that I have in this video, uh, so I hope you like him. Um, he turns around enemy pushes when your push is getting to the enemy push. Um, he just does so much. He's resistant. He's a tank. Fantastic. He's going to be in everything. Uh, Rookery on Whelps is fantastic. They deploy with an extra egg. When they break, they all hatch. It's so good. Um, it creates a very strong wave of minions instantly. Uh, it's really hard to deal with unless you're running like Chain Lightning, which I think most people should be, uh, depending on the build, but not in this one. Uh, we have Execute, Bloodthirsty, Bloodless Allies within Spell Area for 10 seconds. Generally, our mobs are going to be grouped up anyway. Um, extra damage on the base, extra damage on whatever we're fighting, plus Bloodlust, pretty good. And then Skeletons. Not a lot of people are using Skeletons right now. Um, I think... Togar and I had a discussion at one point in the Discord um, about this new talent. Um, or rather, he brought it up um, to everyone's attention. If deployed near a tower or meeting stone, deploy with plus two additional skeletons. Solid talent, uh, especially giving them bloodlust. Um, or with Maev, with her ability, which is casting a smoke ball on deploy, stealthing near my allies. Really good for dropping aggro tables, getting an extra hit in. Um... Man, doing that to five skeletons and four whelps and then giving them all bloodlust seems fantastic. Our next leader is Jaina. Um, I don't think it's been published yet, but this guide will feature on one of Arclight Spanner's videos. You can find him at Arclight Insights on his YouTube page. Um, but this is the build I submitted for him. I think everyone in the Threads of Fate community is making a guide at some point that will be released in the future. Um, so look forward to that. Um, but this is kind of a Jaina support build. Everyone knows about the Jaina Unbound Spam Base Rush. Uh, so I want to talk about a little bit of a different build. I want to talk about something that supports minions rather than using spells to win the game. Um, so first we have Jaina. Uh, I've got her running the Flurry Talent, where Frost Bolts burst on impact, frosting enemies near the target. Uh, frosting should lower attack and movement speed, I believe. So, anything to help support our troops. We've got Footmen, where they have 30% extra health, uh, or empty extra health, rather. Uh, this is for our Holy Nova spell. We're going to be using this to support our units quite a bit. And being able to use a Holy Nova right when you need to, instead of waiting for your Footman to lose health, to gain value from it uh, is pretty solid. Uh, so that's why we're running the 30% missing health. The Renew Talent's great. Um, I don't really care for Inner Fire in this build because Footmen already have the uh, the armor trait, so we won't be using that. And uh, Amplify Magic, not super great. We have two elemental units in this build. Um, not going to really work well. Then we have Brilliant Flash on Chain Lightning. So when you deploy Chain Lightning, it stuns enemies for one second. Great talent. It supports your minions. You'll use it quite a bit. Uh, Quillbore. We've talked about why. Uh, he's great. And then Pyromancer. Uh, we're running the Conflagrate talent where your splash area is doubled. 
Uh, sometimes when you have your footmen out, since there are four of them, mobs can get kind of separated a little bit, but not too much. But it's enough that you'll want double splash damage, uh, or area damage, rather, um, on your Pyromancer. Then we have Tyrion. Um, we're running Divine Shield on him, where you gain a Magical Shield at 30% health, absorbing all damage for 5 seconds. Uh, footmen. Same reasoning, 30% extra health for our Holy Nova, also for our Tyrion to heal. Uh, that way, if he heals a footman that would otherwise have been at full health, he's not losing the value of his heal. Uh, Quibor, gonna happen. Uh, the Pyromancer, we're gonna run the Conflagrate uh, talent again. Just same reasoning, footmen spread things out. We've got some flying support from Harpies here, uh, dealing double damage on their first attack. Uh, I'm running this talent over Trinket Collector, just to keep the gold cost down a little bit. Uh, it may be better to run Trinket Collector. I think that's uh, there can be an argument there, so kind of dealer's choice. And then a little bit of more range support. Uh, a little further back, I'm giving them plus two range. Uh, depending on the PvE encounter, you may decide that you want to block a first attack, or deploy with an extra Murloc. I think all three of these talents are fantastic. And I think you'll do good to use any of them in any PvE uh, map. Our next leader is Cairn Bloodhoof. We're running him with Reincarnation. Where he resurrects at 50% health once. Uh, planes running is good. I think it's better in PvP. Uh, all these builds are pretty centric on PvE focus. And then Aftershock when stun expires. Affected enemies for days for 5 seconds. I don't like this talent, like, at all. I don't understand what it does. Daze is just an attack, or not an attack speed, a movement speed slow. It doesn't do anything with their attack speed. Generally, if they're in range to get stunned by Cairn, they're already going to be in range to hit you. So there's... It feels like there's no reason to run a Daze talent. It's kind of weird. Um, we are... Running Big Bad Voodoo on our troll to take advantage of Cairn's health buff to horde units. Uh, Stone of Torin done after it charges for three seconds. Pretty fantastic. This unit got buffed too when it was already pretty solid. Uh, Cairn buffing its HP will work wonders for it. Uh, I think Stone of Torin is great in this build. Uh, we've got our Shaman that grants armors nearby allies. Uh, ability of one charge, so just one unit. Um, but if you can deploy it on your Stonehoof Torrin or your Cairn, have a pretty pretty tanky unit. Uh, Batrider, kind of cheap horde unit. Take advantage of the horde health buff uh, and try and lower the cost of our deck since we've got three, four, four, and five here with Cairn. Um, increased flaming pool size. I think there's an argument for both of these other talents too, but this is just the one I'm running. Quillbore because Quillbore. And then... Uh, Holy Nova with Renew to try and take advantage of the extra health that all of our Horde units have. Uh, hoping that we can catch them kind of low and heal them all the way back up. Uh, full disclosure, I think Cairn is the weakest Horde unit, uh, unit and one of the weaker units in the game. But that is the build I would run if I were playing him uh, tomorrow. Next we have Grom. Uh, Grom got a buff and some extra talents this patch which is fantastic. Um, we're running the Mirror Image talent on him uh, when entering combat. I think it's fantastic. I've seen some videos of it destroying people's bases. They hit pretty hard. Um, I think it'll be great. On our troll, we're running Headhunting, where on kill increases attack and movement speed by 10%. Stacks up to 50%. Great unit, especially being bloodlusted by uh, Grom. Uh, if you have a fully stacked Headhunter with Bloodlust, Man, that's going to tear something apart. Uh, Bat Rider, take advantage of Bloodlust. Uh, just a cheap unit to fit the Horde slot. Harpies, where they deal double damage on the first attack. Uh, could also argue Trinket Collector. I was just trying to keep the cost down. But anything with Squad is typically good with Grom because he Bloodlusts uh, everything around him. So the more units you have, the better. Uh, Necromancer, summoning Skeletal Mages. Great talent. Fantastic. Grom giving them Bloodlust. So good. Uh, Quillbore, once again, Quillbore. Uh, and then Cheat Death, Vampirism, where they are healed when dealing damage. Uh, I think this is fantastic, especially being uh, with Grom and bloodlusting everything. 
uh, definitely take advantage of that. It'll probably be used quite a bit. And that's Grom. Uh, our next leader is Sneed. Uh, Sneed got some awesome changes to this patch. He generates a lot of gold now. Um, so I think he's actually pretty solid. Um, which is strange. So strange. So the talent we're running on Sneed is lead with greed. You gain an additional two gold when Sneed triggers Sneed before greed. Uh, which is his... Um, his extra gold generation when a siege unit takes, I believe, a tower or a treasure chest. We have Chain Lightning, where we're stunning when we deploy it. That's just to support our units. This is a pretty supporty style deck. It'll also deal with uh, Murkai Waves and Harpies and things like that. We've got our uh, Raider with the Saboteur talent, where damaging a tower reduces damage dealt by 50% for 3 seconds. Uh, I think that uh, talent is fantastic. I'm not sure if it affects your barracks because I believe barracks and towers are two separate things, but if it does, it's fantastic. If it doesn't, it's just okay, and we might uh, switch to Demolitionist or Sunder Armor. I think both of those talents are pretty good. Next, we have Meat Wagon with his uh, Flay Trebuchet talent, increasing his range by two. This unit is so good. It's so fantastic for Onyxia and, you know, really just any other pve map being able to outrange everything in the game fantastic not even gonna say the name quillbore this time oops <laughs> uh trinket collector on harpies minor trait pretty fantastic gives us some uh some flying support and then uh our fire hammer with molten metal dealing 50 percent more damage to flying enemies uh this deck's pretty susceptible to flying i feel like uh, so, just throwing that on there will help clear things quicker. Uh, let's move on to Murkai. This is one of my favorite builds. This is the second choice of builds that I would play uh, if I started tomorrow. Uh, I really like this build. I haven't seen anyone really run something like this yet. But, I mean, the Prowler just got this pack leader ability where he grants nearby beast allies 30% damage. So, that's probably why. But... Right now, I've got it to where the Murlocs you spawn, spawn at his location instead. We've got 30% extra beast damage. We've got 10% more damage for each raptor nearby for our raptors. Quibbler. <laughs> uh, cheat death where vampirism, uh, you know, effective minis are healed when dealing damage. Smoke bomb, effective minis move 50% faster until on stealth. And harpies for trinket collector. Um, and then... It's just being a squad, more things to speed up, more things to cheat death, uh, more damage from beasts. I really like this build. I think there's some interchangeable pieces here uh, that I won't go into too much detail on, uh, just because I don't want to extend the length of the video any more than I have to. But I really like this build. Uh, I think there's an argument case for giving your minis bloodlust, uh, but they die when the effect ends. That's perfectly fine, especially on something like Onyxia, where the lifesteal doesn't matter anyway, because you might heal back up to full health in the span of your cheat death, but you're just going to get one shot when the spell ends anyway. So unless it adds an extra attack, uh, Steel Fate is probably better than Vampirism in scenarios such as that. Um, being able to increase the speed of your giant push, because keep in mind, when you play Murkai somewhere, and you start dropping your Raptors and your Prowler, you're going to be spawning a ton of Murlocs. You're going to have like 15, 20 things on the battlefield. Uh, speeding them all up will really catch your opponent off guard. It'll get you to your objective faster. Uh, your opponent will generate less gold to deal with the push that's coming. Um, I think it's very solid. Uh, especially in PvE, it might not be as good in PvP, especially having all of the Murlocs spawn at Murkai's location. Uh, just because a single chain lightning will probably stop your push. Um, but I think there are some interesting things you can do with Murkai to make it work a little better in PvP. But we will talk about those things in an in-depth leader guide in the future. Next we have Hogger. Uh, there are a lot of traditional builds with Hogger uh, that just kind of support him and try and stack him up as much as you can and play him a bunch. Uh, we're going to stray away from those for now. I think most people know those decks. Um, I really like the Poison build with him. So Poison is kind of meh on its own. I believe it's 8 damage every 5 seconds. Or sorry, every second for 5 seconds. So it's 40 damage total. 
uh, but it stacks. So one stack is 40 damage over five seconds. The next is 80 over five seconds, 120 over five seconds. And so when you can stack it up continuously, it gets really out of hand really quickly. And so everything in this build has poison. So he gains poison, Harpy's gain poison, Quillbore inflicts poison when he emerges. Uh, our, get his name, our, I'm going to call him the Pumpkin Thrower. <laughs> I know that's not what he's called, but the Pumpkin Thrower, um, he deals damage when, or he deals poison when he damages something, and then on death, summon the pumpkin. When touched, it poisons nearby enemies. So maybe you've got this giant wave of poison pushing, and they end your push, but they're still poisoned. On their way towards your base, they'll hit the pumpkin and refresh their poison stacks. Um, gain poison, gain poison, and then this is the weird part. I don't know how this works, and I don't know that I've seen anyone else test this. Invenom says deal twice as much poison damage. What does that mean? Does that mean that when they apply a stack, it deals double damage? Like, if I have a push going, and there's Harpies, and the Pumpkin Thrower, and Zephyus, and they're all hitting the boss, and I've got, I don't know, 10 stacks of poison on it. That's 400 damage over uh, 5 seconds. If Spiderlings come along, and in Venom, when it puts it to the 11th stack, does it double it from 440 damage to 880? Is that how that works? Um... I have no idea. If that's how that works, and Venom's going to be an insane talent. If it's not how it works, we'll probably go with Explode on Death poisoning nearby enemies. That just seems better. But who knows? I don't know how that works. Um, I would love some clarification on that if somebody knows. I don't feel like anyone's tested it so far, but I really think that this is something to look into. Uh, next build we have is Charlga. Uh, this is kind of a tricky one for me. We've played around a little bit with this leader, but we can't really figure out how to make it work, or at least I can't, because the way it works is that it takes every cost in your deck and, like, shuffles them up, and so you're playing units for random costs. So, like, this five gold for the Huntress and this one gold for the Defias Bandit could be swapped, and so I'll pay one gold for Huntress and five gold for the Defias Bandit. And that seems kind of cool at first, but it doesn't do anything. So if I were to play my entire deck, right, and it's the same cost without Charlga's ability, it's 2, 4, 8, 9, uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 gold. Uh, 20 gold with the minor talent. When I go through and play all of those, that's 20 gold. That's one cycle of the deck. Okay, if I have Charlga's ability, these will get swapped around. Like, I might pay one gold for the Huntress, and five for the Blizzard, and four for the Murlocs, and four for the Quillbore, and two for the Harpies. But once I play through my entire deck, I've still paid the same amount of gold. So it's kind of weird how the ability works. I don't really understand um, what is there to make it special. And maybe... Maybe I'm just missing something, but this is where I would play it. Um, it seems to me that you want a couple of high-end stuff, like a Huntress and a Blizzard. Blizzard's kind of the medium end, but it kind of works. Um, and then Quillbor for Quillbor, Harpies for mining gold, uh, Defy Spanets for more gold, and then Murlocs for range support. Next we have General Dracosath. Um... I really like this character. It makes all your minis do more elemental damage. We're going to run Lasting Legacy. We're on death. He drops a banner. Where nearby enemies take 50% additional elemental damage, and it lasts 10 seconds. I think that's probably pretty solid. Uh, Fire Elemental just got buffed. Thought it was decent beforehand. Probably pretty good now. Um, we're going to run Fan the Flames. We're taking elemental damage. Increases damage dealt by him uh, by 10%, which stacks up to 30%. So that, coupled with... Dracosath could be some pretty big damage. Uh, Drake, where she periodically summons whelps. Pretty solid. Uh, Holy Nova with Amplify Magic, where effects are doubled on all elemental minis. I think that's fantastic. Uh, more healing for your minis. More damage against random elemental minis. Fantastic. Uh, 
Chain Lightning, Stun on Deploy. I really like that talent. I think it's very good for supporting your push. Quill War for Quill War. Um, and then Necromancer, so that we can summon Skeletal Mages. Everything's dealing elemental damage. Pretty solid range support. Uh, just a little clarification. I don't think Drakasath is fantastic. This might be a good build now that we have Amplify Magic and this banner, uh, but not one of the leaders I would specifically go out of my way and look for. Uh, then we have Rend, everyone's favorite. Everyone loves gold reduction. Um, so for Rend, we're playing Scale and Steel, getting resistant while flying and armored while dismounted. Fantastic, just make him tanky. Uh, Drake, summoning Whelp Eggs. Whelps are fantastic. Whelp with Rookery. Can't really go wrong there, especially when they cost two gold. Pretty fantastic. Uh, we've got Trinket Collector on Harpies to collect gold and give us a little bit of gold advantage. Uh, there'll be three gold cost with Rend, even though they get increased to four with the talent. Uh, Chain Lightning, once again, stunning to support your push. Quill Bore. Quill Bore. Um, and then we have Murlocs. They are a cheap uh, ranged unit just to kind of lower the cost a little bit of your units. Uh, plus two range, kind of keep them back out of the fight. There's probably a use case for every single talent. Just kind of preference. Now we get into the Undead Faction. So, Baron Ribbondair uh, is fantastic. A lot of people don't really use Skeletons currently, but Baron gives you a use for them. He periodically summons Skeletons, and then I'm running the talent where he periodically sacrifices a nearby Skeleton to be healed. Uh, I think that talent's pretty fantastic. I know Soul Reaver uh, kind of popularized that, I believe, when he first started playing way back when. Uh, great talent, great leader. Uh, skeletons with Exhum. If deployed near a tower or mini stone, deploy with plus two additional skeletons. Fantastic. Uh, skeletal Party. Uh, five man talent. Summon the Skeletal Tank, Rogue, Priest, and two Mages. I think that's great as well. Harpies with Trinket Collector for a little bit of flying support and the gold advantage. Necromancer. Summon more skeletons, more range support with summoning Skeletal Mages. Do I have to say anything about this? And then Cheat Death for Apocalypse. This is kind of what makes me want to play all of these skeletons. Apocalypse says, Affected skeletons resurrect at your base when they die. That seems really good. Um, I don't know if anyone's used it yet. I've not seen anybody. Uh, but there's only a few people that actually share and record the things they are doing currently. Uh, I would imagine that Soul Reaver is probably playing with this. I know that he picked Rind at the start. He was talking a little bit about it. But we haven't really seen what he's doing with it yet. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm sure he'll post a video at some point uh, showcasing what this can do. And now we move on to the leader that I am going to be playing when I get access. Uh, it's... Probably my favorite leader. I know there are a couple people in the beta currently that are using it and popularizing it. I'm pretty happy to see it working very well. Um, so let's take a look at how I would play it, because it's probably pretty similar. Uh, I haven't really seen what they're doing. I just know that Tap Snap has been talking about it, and Funky Monkey has been running it a little bit. Uh, but this is what I would play. This is Thalnos. Uh, I forgot to put talents on all these, but that's okay. We'll run through it real quick. So, Thalos gains a level every time you play a spell. We would run uh, either Bane or Lifesteal, where playing a spell increases attack speed by 30% for 5 seconds, or Drain Life. It just kind of depends on how quickly we can cycle through our deck and how high of a level we can get this guy. Um, I think both are very good. Uh, drain Life is probably better at a high, like a mid level, and Bane is probably better at a high level. Uh, if you're high enough that you're not going to die anyway, uh, being able to get 30% attack speed whenever you cast a spell is pretty solid. Um, Ghoul. I needed something to fit in the undead slot. I think he's pretty solid with cannibalizing, granting him 10 ar or armored for 10 seconds, rather. Um, and he's 2 gold cost, which is important, which we'll get to later. We have our pumpkin thrower. Uh, I would either give him... Plus one range and double splash area, um, or parting gift. Uh, it just kind of depends. I think splashing pumpkins is 
probably a little better. Um, and then we have Reverberation on Chain Lightning. Cast it a second time. Level up Thalos a little more. Pretty fantastic. We've got our Device Bandits, where they gain two extra gold when opening chests. Great way to gain some gold advantage. They're one gold cost. They're hella cheap. They help us cycle back to our spells that we want to cast. Quillbore with Bristleback. Deal a small amount of damage to melee attackers. Quillbore. Uh, and then Smoke Bomb with Band of Thieves. Grant plus two levels to cycle minis within. I think this is solid. Um, maybe Thalos isn't the right place for it, but I'm willing to bet that there's a build out there that makes good use of this with Thalnos, especially with running all these cheap units. We're running these guys specifically so we can cycle back through to spells and level Thalnos up more, uh, and this just kind of rewards us for doing that. So I think you'll find some really good builds with Smoke Bomb in it. This might not be the correct one, but this is the build that I will probably play at some point. Uh, but we got a second build for Thanos here because he is my favorite, and just something else that I might try. So, if you look, it's pretty similar. We've replaced a couple things. Uh, we've still got Thalnos with Lifesteal. We've still got the Ghoul with Armored. I needed something to fit into the Undead slot, and we're not trying to um, raise the cost very high because we still want to cycle through to our spells to level him up. But we've replaced our Pumpkin Thrower with Meat Wagon. It can hit flying units. It outranges everything in the game. It's probably important for killing on Nixia in this build. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Once again, Reverberation. Cast Chain Lightning a second time. And then we've got Arcane Blast. Uh, where Sequential Taps increase radius by one. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that the other two aren't great for us. Uh, so Arcane Power. Spell Sequence starts at three and ends at four. Not great. We want to be casting the first two ranks and then having the option to cast three and four so that we can level up Thalnos. We don't want to start at three and four. Um, we want those cheap spells to level them up. And then Torrent is gain a level after casting rank four. We're probably not casting rank four, honestly. Uh, there will probably be some cases where we do, but not to level up Thalnos. Um, Defias Bandits, plus two gold pretty good we want that gold advantage and then quill war for quill war so these are all the builds that i would play starting out i think they're good starter builds uh i think it's nice to give people a focus point on what units to buy but remember these are just my opinions things that i would do uh, i by no means am the best player uh but just wanted to toss some builds out to get people uh some info before they start hopefully all the discord Beta waves come soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.